Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land. Please abide in your After Birth Plus. It is a sunny Sunday in Vancouver, BC. Let me check. Okay, not sunny. Overcast. However, that's not that bad. Overcast beats raining. 2x H3 RK FK. FK in the coffee, Zach? Let's pop the sun card here. You probably don't even need me to say it, but dude, let me tell you. Stats are good. Speed is the worst stat, and I guess, to be honest with you, I hadn't thought about this until just now. But we might be on 1 HP. All we need is a bomb, though. There's a lot of tinted rocks. We're definitely not on 1 HP. <laughs> you know how I know that? Um, we got Black Lotus as one of our items. It's freaking Black Lotus, dude. This is an amazing start. I offer, uh, a, I offer zero complaints at the present moment. Um... Everything's pretty much coming out Millhouse. I mean, 8 Rate of Fire. Let's do it. I can live with it. 8 Rate of Fire. 4.3 damage. Insanely good. And I gotta tell you, we're, we're on a little bit of a high right now, you know? First off, it's the first Isaac video recorded after a day off. I'm energized a little bit. I actually went to the grocery store yesterday, I know. You're expecting me to have anecdotes? I got a couple, okay? I got a couple. I'm not afraid to admit it. But first, what did I do yesterday on my day off? Thank you for asking. I really appreciate it. Um, honestly, it was like an insanely productive day off. And I, I, again, I've talked about this before. I like that. A, a large part of me, like, getting older... Uh-oh. He, he said the words. He said the O word. A large part of me getting older has been this uh, realization that, like, you know, I'm actually, like, happier when I'm doing something that aids my life in some way, if that makes sense. When I was, like, 19, if I had, like, a day off. It's a little spice, but let's do it. Probably a little bit worse than a wash, but we don't know how we did on HP. We did get a speed upgrade. But I would almost, like, trick myself on a day off, if that makes sense. I would be like, you know, well, I don't need to, like, clean up. It's my day off. We save that for on stuff, you know? Even the Lord rested on the seventh day. And then I get to the end of a day off after playing, you know, then not recently, but, you know, ten years ago. After playing, like, you know, 12 hours of Civ 4, and I was like, oh, why do I feel kind of bad? And I'm like, oh, because I've just mindlessly uh, put my brain inside a Skinner box for 12 hours. By the way, I love Civ. It's not, a <laughs> it's not meant to be an insult to Civ. It's more just like, you know, it, I enjoyed it for like a bit, and then after like a couple of hours, I'm just doing it because I'm doing it. You know what I mean? I'm doing it because of inertia. Lately, I've been more about like, hey, let's let's get a little bit more active on the days off and see what we can kind of see how we feel about it. And if we don't like it, hey, we work a lot most of the other time. We can just, uh, you know, take this as a real day of rest where we do literally nothing. But I usually, I think we should go for it. I usually feel better as a result, although the days whip by, right? So yesterday, I, you know, woke up. Brush my teeth, showered, uh, set my videos for the next day. And then I was like, you know, it'd be cool. Like, people have been... We, we've been open to doing a little bit more inside baseball type stuff lately, which is just a, a fancy way of saying... Um, and we're going to go for the guppy transformation and nothing else here. A fancy way of saying, you know, inside baseball is just when you talk about... Uh, the business instead of talking about whatever, you know, the business is about, if that makes sense. You know, so like, inside baseball would really be like, instead of talking about... Well, this is not necessarily a good analogy, but just hear me out here. <laughs> Imagine if baseball announcers, which is kind of like, the or commentators, I should say. Imagine if instead of talking about baseball, they talked about the business of being commentators, you know? It's not what you originally signed up for, but I think a lot of people like to hear it. So I've been doing more of that stuff, and... Uh, thought it would be cool to do... Ay, that was completely my own fault. 
it would be cool to do kind of like a ask me anything type thing, so I knocked that out. Excuse me, I thought there was a blood bank somewhere here. Uh, and answered a bunch of questions about, you know, what it's like to be a streamer and posted some video responses to that on Twitter. Kate was up and around. I said, what do you want to do? She said, I wouldn't mind getting some uh, groceries. So we went out, got some food, got some groceries. Please just let me... Thank you. That's all I could possibly ask for. We gotta be a little careful here, though. That No, we don't. No, we don't. Went out and got some groceries. Came home. Did a couple loads of laundry. Rented knives out on YouTube's Blockbuster service. Finally saw knives out. Studied a little bit of Korean. Cleaned the bathrooms, went to bed. Like, it was... I was saturated yesterday. In a good way. I was I was stoked when the day was done. I was like, I did a lot of stuff that's gonna make my life easier throughout this week. I know what you're thinking. NL, how was Knives Out? The hype on Knives Out was not misplaced. What a strange way to phrase that sentence. Yeah, the reason I start just go ahead. The reason I start with saying something like that is because sometimes I feel like, you know, and I 100% I, I believe this, even if you disagree. We, we have the room to disagree, but I, I do believe this. The more popular a movie gets, the greater um, the burden of goodness is on the movie for people. And I try to avoid it myself, but of course there is a certain temptation now and then, you know? Everybody else loved this movie. They thought it was so good. I only thought it was okay. That must mean that I'm smarter than them. You know, it is the... It's not a, a good uh, habit to have, but I think if we examine ourselves honestly, a lot of us probably have exhibited it from time to time. You know when I did? It was the release of the Harry Potter books. When I was... Uh, I mean, the first one came out when I was in fifth grade, I think. I read it. And... I went, I don't really think this is that good. You know, I'm gonna consider me more of a Chronicles of Narnia type of guy. Maybe it was sixth grade, I don't know. So I read it, and, and just off of reading the first book as an 11 or 12 year old, and the fact that it was so popular, I was like, this is not for me. This is, uh... It was like 10% of my personality when I was in middle school was being the kid who didn't like Harry Potter because everybody else liked it. Now, I'm like, dude, honestly, I feel like I screwed up pretty badly because now people my age and, you know, slightly younger make references to Harry Potter all the time. And I'm like, I read the first book and I saw none of the movies. The reason I didn't see the movies is because the movies were based on the books, and if I saw the movies, then I would have had to go back on my only personality trait at that time, which was being the guy who doesn't like the books. <laughs> anyway. Whoops. And now I'm like, dude, the, the Harry Potter, you know, say what you will. Ooh, let's go. Say what you will about J.K. Rowling. Um, but Harry Potter is like one of the biggest, you know, young adult series of all time. And I just went... Despite being like the exact perfect age for it, I was like, eh, I don't really think it's for me. I have a very discerning palate for a, a middle schooler, I'll have you know. Um, I could have been like the guy in the, you know, Tolkien era. Really? I think that's, I think that's our secret room. I don't believe you. Okay. It was like, oh, well, Frodo, what a bizarre name. Hmm. Anyway. So all I'm saying is I think that... Oh, we gotta be really careful with the sprinkler here. That being said. All I'm saying is that I think the more popular something gets... Um, for a lot of people, the better it has to be in order to justify that popularity. Even though the only thing that's changed is the attention it's gotten. You know? If you had been the first person to see Parasite, you're like... You know, oh, this is amazing. Why isn't anybody talking about this movie? If you're watching it after, you know, people on Twitter won't shut up about it. By the way, it is my favorite movie of 2019. That I've seen, at least. Um, you're like, I don't see what all the fuss is about. Yeah, it's fine, but it's not, you know, it's not groundbreaking. 
Anyway, suffice it to say, Knives Out got a lot of critical uh, attention, a lot of commercial success. And uh, when I watched it, I was like, eh, it deserved. <laughs> highly, highly deserved. You know what? I, it, it actually reminded me a lot of... Uh, you're going to have to go with me on this one for a bit, okay? It reminded me a lot of Parasite, and it reminded me a lot of Get Out, actually. In that all three of those movies have a few things in common, but one of the things that they have in common is that there is, like, a pretty obvious, transparent, like message in the movie like the the themes of the movie are, are readily apparent um but at the same time it also actually tells like an entertaining story like i, th I think it's like i don't want to call it necessarily a mature movie but i think it's a movie where like it's kind of like animaniacs you know i think if you're a 10 year old kid well you know there's a little violence i guess but let's say you're like you know a 13 year old kid if you're watching Knives Out, I think you're like, Whoa, what a cool, like, mystery. Like, this is actually just an entertaining movie. I think the same goes for Get Out, and the same goes for, uh... For Parasite as well. Um... And if you're a little bit older, you know... Or a lot bit older, even... Uh... You look at those movies and you go... Potentially, at least. You go, hey, what a, what a cool mystery. But also, it's neat how they, like, interwove the the actual themes and the underlying message of the movie. But even if you didn't catch any of that, it's just entertaining on its own merits as well. So I... I still, you know, for me... Is it at Parasite tier? No. I think I think Parasite... I, I still feel comfortable that's my number one of 2019. Is it in the Uncut Gems tier? I don't believe so. I think Uncut Gems will still be my number two of 2019. For now, at least. Now you get into the next, because my, you know, my third favorite, oh, come on. My third favorite movie of 2019 is now available on Amazon Prime uh, video, by the way, at least in Canada, Midsummer. I think it's in that Midsummer tier. For me, I, I think it's in the, it's top five of 2019. Is it third? Is it fourth? I don't know. I'm not going to be too particular about it, I suppose. But it's definitely up there. I thought it was very good. I still need to see the lighthouse, but after I see the lighthouse, I'm pretty sure I got it all. I got it all handled. <laughs> I've seen all the movies from 2019 I want to see. And then we can start working on 2020 if I can find a theater around here that is playing uh, Color Out of Space. A lot of people have asked me, NL, do you think you're going to go see the Sonic movie? I think that I will probably... Well, okay, th there's a couple of possibilities. I have seen... No, 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 no. I saw Bumblebee in theaters. I saw Detective Pikachu in theaters. It is a little bit... Uh, feels weird, champ. For me to be like, oh, I don't go see... Merely... Okay. Merely passable children's movies in the theater. Because, you know... Dun, 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 I do. Let's take this, but really we're looking for something to replace Sprinkler at this point. It's Depths 1, I think, what is it? I don't even know what it gives us, but I'll take it. It's good return on our investment. Um, however, where was I going with this? I, I doubt I'll see it in theaters. But I am stoked to see that uh, it does have a fresh Raiden. Raiden? <laughs> does have a fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I, I do resist some of the discourse surrounding the Sonic movie, though. One being, you have to go see it because the animators worked so hard to make Sonic look not weird. That, you know, you need to go support the fact that they, you know, crunched for like six months to make that happen. No, I do not. You know why? Because I was never that concerned about Sonic looking weird in the first place. I can't deny that he looked weird. But at the same time, uh, probably wasn't going to go see the movie in theaters anyway. Don't believe I ever was like, you know what the real problem with this is, is his teeth are strange. You know, it was more like, it's a movie that seems to be for general audiences. It's not, it doesn't really compel me to see it. Now, I will say, if you were on Twitter saying, Lamau, I would go see the Sonic movie. 
if they change the way he looked, you should probably put your money where your mouth is now and go see it. But if you were not part of that camp, you are not beholden to that piece of uh, criticism, in my opinion. And the other one is, uh, I was surprised to see this, because it feels to me like kind of a vestige of an earlier time, right? But uh, I've seen some people be like, you've got to go see it, because it's like the best video game movie ever made. It, and I got to say, if that's where your priorities are, more power to you. But that doesn't really interest me at all. What is the best video game movie ever made that I've ever seen? I don't know, dude. It might be Detective Pikachu. But even then, I mean, you can go back and find my tweet on Detective Pikachu. I was like, it's okay. <laughs> the the, what I really liked, and I think everyone is pretty much on the same page here. What I really like about Detective Pikachu is the fact that uh, the the creature design is awesome. But apart from that, I don't I don't really care about like going to see something just because it's based on a medium that I enjoy. You know what I mean? I apologize if that makes me a traitor to the cause. By the way, let's get out of here. But it's the honest, the goodness truth. I gotta admit it. Also, like, I know Sonic is beloved. If you wanted to get me to go see a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, the time to do it was probably in uh, maybe around 1998 when I was 10 years old. At that point, I probably still had some affinity for the for the Sonic franchise. I've just been so out of it for so long. It's not for me. I'm not saying it shouldn't exist. It's just not for me. Perhaps I will watch it at some point, though. On on DVD or Blu-ray? Anything can happen. Anything can happen on Blu-ray. That What happens on Blu-ray stays on Blu-ray, I believe is the expression. I forgot where I was going with this. You know what? The only thing that could get me to actually go to theaters and see the Sonic movie right now is Jim Carrey. Despite... I I honestly, I, I have a lot of problems with Jim Carrey. <laughs> uh, I, I do. And, you know, yes, mostly it's related to vaccinations, I'll admit. Um, and then also, you know, I, I've watched, like... You gotta remember... Jim Carrey was, like, the biggest comedian-slash-movie star uh, of my childhood. I mean, at, at least if you, you know, if you were 10 in 1998, Jim Carrey was, like, your Leonardo DiCaprio. He was in The Mask, Liar, Liar, The Cable Guy, you know, Ace Ventura, etc., etc. Not high art, necessarily, but as a kid, you're like, this guy, is, he's the king of the world right now. But that being said, there's just so I think... I just find Jim Carrey very, uh, very affable, very talented. I know how bizarre it sounds. I mean, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, I routinely said it's my favorite movie of all time. I don't know if that's actually true anymore. I haven't seen it in like seven years, but that's what I've been saying for a decade and a half. Um, excuse me. Excuse me, though. I like, I like Jim Carrey. Sometimes I've watched like interviews and stuff with it. I watched that like uh So he he did a movie where he played Andy Kaufman. Uh the I don't even know what to call him. <laughs> He's a comedian, but also prankster slash philosopher slash artist slash you know, whatever. Um and he was like a real jerk in that movie, but I was also like, I get it, it's part of the process, but at the same time You ever heard the the quote from uh a conversation that Dustin Hoffman had with Laurence Olivier. Dustin Hoffman, famously, uh, at least at the time, a big method actor, which means that, you know... You know, it's like Jared Leto in The Joker. If you want to be the Joker in the movie, you gotta torment your, your friends and family by, uh... You know, what did he... He sent them, like, you know, dead rats in the mail or something like that. So that was what Dustin Hoffman was like to some extent. And then, you know... Dustin Hoffman met Lawrence uh, Olivier. Again, a, a little bit from an older generation, but a famous screen and stage actor himself, and said, you know, hey, what's your, uh, what are your tips? What's your method to get, like, into a character? And then Lawrence Olivier said, uh, basically, it's called acting, sweetheart. Look it up. 
have you tried acting? It's much easier, I think was the <laughs> was the answer. So good. I'm always, I mean, I'm not an actor or an actress, obviously, or, you know, involved in that at all. But for me, I'm like, man, you did a great job on the screen, but on the other hand, you treated everybody around you like a jerk for, like, you know, six months. Was it worth it? I guess it was worth it if, you know, in a utilitarian sense, you know, on the other end, your performance emotionally affected people in, like, a positive way. Maybe there's more good than bad, but at the same time, I'm like... I don't know, can't you just act? Like, I always look at the opposite of that. Which is like, everybody... On every movie Keanu Reeves has ever worked on, there's like... Infinity stories about him being like... Hey! I bought everyone in the production crew a motorcycle. And everyone's like, he's such a nice guy! Keanu Reeves gave me half his sandwich, I was just the gaffer! on Destination Wedding, starring Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder. Keanu Reeves, uh, paid out of pocket to up the catering budget for everybody. What a nice guy! And the other half of the stories are like... <laughs> Dude, there's nothing I could do. I was playing a jerk in a movie. I had to pretend to be a jerk in real life. I don't know. Different strategies, I guess. I guess it helps that Keanu Reeves, he doesn't play a jerk in too many movies. And, to be fair, and I, I hate that I'm gonna say this, because it's, it's kicking a man for no reason. But, I'm, let, me, let me start slow on this one, okay? Keanu Reeves is definitely not a bad actor. But he hasn't had any roles in his career that have really, that I've seen at least, have pushed him to the, the limit of like what you would expect his capabilities are. You know what I mean? Like when he was younger, he was playing a lot of like, I am an FBI agent. And then, you know, Neo was kind of just, I'm not going to say it's a one note performance, but you know, it's great movie. But I kind of feel the same about it that I do about John Wick, is that it's just like, you know... I'm not saying it's easy to play John Wick, but I think the character does the heavy lifting rather than the actor or actress. How about that? So maybe Keanu Reeves has never had an opportunity where he had to method act, because most of the time they were like, In this movie, you're playing Keanu Reeves, but he's a little older now. Okay, damage is outrageous here. But, you know, I guess when it comes down to it, I guess what I'm asking is... Would you rather be a decent actor who's nice to people around you? Or, uh, win an Oscar and be, a uh, kind of a jerk? I don't know, I guess it, de it depends on what you get into the business for, right? If acting is your, your, your craft and your lifeblood probably feel a little bit differently than if you're like, oh, I just kind of fell into it because I'm, you know, pretty handsome. I don't know, honestly. I, I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking smack about stuff I have no affinity for slash awareness of, you know? So I did have an anecdote, by the way, about the grocery store. We kind of got lost in the sauce for a bit. But we went to uh, Whole Foods. I, I know. Whole paycheck. I know. It's expensive. I know. There was that picture a long time ago of the asparagus water for six bucks. Turns out that was a, a printing error. Uh, but, you know, on the internet it takes a lot more energy to refute something, especially if it's in line with your existing biases, than it does to make it up in the first place. Um, let me out, please. I don't want to be here anymore. Just a spicy room. Um, Whole Foods is too expensive. Full stop. However, they also do have the best fruits and vegetables in the city. That I've seen, at least. I can see forever. That's basically the... I mean, that's the setup for the bit. Let's put it that way. Let me out. He's out. <laughs> I don't really want to mess with you right now. We only have a 9% chance of a deal with the devil. Let's up that. I can live with up in that. Um, and we need to see if we got some HP here. 
But anyway, oh, this that's that's not good. Are we on zero HP? <laughs> Hold on, I'm I'm now quite scared to be honest with you. Ooh, a little spicy, little spice, little spicy, dude. Hey, you coward! I have to save the bit for next time. I honestly, I can't believe we lost the run with Ipecac and Brimstone. I got lost in the sauce. That's the curse of Keanu, dude. I did it to myself. Wow, what a bummer. Well, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm bad at Isaac again. Appreciate your support, and I'll see you next time.